Welcome to live stream number 120. My name is Lars Christensen, and uh, well, we're gonna talk all about Fusion 360. Today, how to create an airfoil wing propeller design. So this is one of those requests from, uh, from some of you guys, and um, today I will have to, uh, to ask for some uh, expert um, help in the comments area uh, below. Uh, but let's jump into it and talk a little bit about airfoils and uh, kind of like how this whole thing works. So what we're talking about is if you're, you know, um, and I, Today I'm gonna to sh I'm gonna tell you everything I know about airfoils. Uh, so this is kind of like you know the design of I guess a wing or a propeller um, on how to to kind of like you know lifts and all that's great stuff. Um, so kind of like this shape you're seeing on your screen right now could be uh, would, will will classify as a um, as an airfoil. And of course when we get into Fusion 360. Uh, there is all different kinds of ways that uh, we could handle that. So this picture here um, is actually just me going out on uh, on Google and Google airfoil, um, and then you get a picture like this. And of course, this picture here, uh, we could um, go into Fusion, say insert as a canvas, and then bringing it in like that. Let me just do that. Um, so we can take a look at that. So you could bring it in here um, and then we could start a sketch around and we could start tracing with splines. However, um, first of all, there's probably some people out there who knows a lot about this kind of stuff, engineering and all that stuff, and be like, yeah, that's all great, but then you never get a true airfoil because there's more math behind that. Um, and I'm not gonna argue with those people. So I thought that, okay, so this is all great. You can bring in via canvas and now you could choose to trace around if that's what you want. And you know, that's all good with me. But uh, let me just X out of that so we get a, uh, a blank document in here. Uh, but there's gotta be um, an easier way, right? Or a, uh, a better way uh, to handle that. So, and. I've said before, I'm all about being lazy uh, when it comes to, uh, to Cat and Cam. So let's take advantage of that. So what I did was I went up here to the add-in section um, and you will click up here and you will see that you have the Fusion uh, App Store up here. So we click on that and that's gonna open up a website, of course on my other monitor because that's how that works. So if you have never been into the App Store, hang on, let me just go back to Fusion. Go up here and click add-ins, click Fusion 360 App Store, and uh, this website will open up. You should absolutely check out uh, the different apps that comes with Fusion. We have done uh, live stream about them before. If you need more details about this, uh, send me an email, lars.christensen at autodesk.com, and we can take all this offline. But what I did was I went in here and I searched airfoil, and it uh, comes up with two different apps. There's one that is called Airfoil Dat to Spline, uh, and then there's an Airfoil Generator. So there's kind of like two different options. Now, the Airfoil Generator is a um, provided by Autodesk. Uh, so that's I, that's a, a app that somebody at Autodesk created. The other one um, I thought was more interesting because that was actually and it's free. <laughs> um, and it comes both for Mac and for uh, for Windows. Uh, it was done, uh, I guess, by Scorpio uh, 9999. Um, so I don't know Scorpio, but thank you for uh, do that. It's a free download. So um, I clicked download and it just, you know, brings down a little installation folder. You click on that and bam, uh, then uh, this app has been installed. So very quickly, I mean like, didn't take a minute, right? Uh, so now we have installed a an app for our uh, airfoils. So um, now we need <laughs> now we need an airfoil. <laughs> so uh, where do you go and get airfoils? Well, actually down here there's a couple of different uh, suggestions for places, and this is one that you know when I was doing a little bit of research here, uh, this is a airfoil tools is apparently a very good place to um, to look for. Uh, 
for AFRLs when I some kind of like looked at different forums and things like that. Um, so I clicked on a uh, an NACA four digit AFRLs. I don't really know what they are used for, <laughs> but I just kind of like poked around and you can kind of like see the different uh, shapes uh, of these uh, different airfoils. And I guess that, you know, like I said, some of them are propellers uh, and some of them are airplane wings or whatever airfoils are used for. Now I'm getting close to the edge of my nods. So what this airfoil is, is actually, um, you know, an accurate um, representation of spline points. Now, if you click down here, it says source for that file. Um, it will open up all the spline coordinates for that specific. I clicked on uh, 24, 20, NACA 2424. Um, so I clicked right over here on the source stats file and it gives me all the different coordinates. Now, like I say, I like to be lazy and we got this cool app. So what I did was I just highlighted all these values and I did a control C for copy, right? Then I opened up Notepad on my computer. Uh, no, there we go. Notepad, hang on. It's coming to where you, empty Notepad uh, file. And I just control V to paste all those in, or command V, whatever you want. So now I just took all those places. And then now with this, we could go and say save as, and uh, we could save it out here. And we're gonna save it as uh, live stream dot dat you just give it that dot dat extension and uh, close it out and now on my desktop um i now should have let me just check that just to make sure uh we should now have that that file there just yep so that is out on the desktop huh i just closed everything now back into fusion okay so um so we did that i hope did you guys follow me along with that? So we had this document. We pasted that into Notepad, what I had on my computer, and I've saved that to my to my desktop. Now back in Fusion, um, after I clicked and installed that file, um, when you go to Add-ins, instead of going back to the App Store, we've already been there. <laughs> uh, we go to Scripts and Add-ins, and now you will see that in my script, that air file that to spline is showing up there, thanks to Scorpion. Uh, so I click on that to run it, and it opens up here and it's asking for a construction plane. So we know we already have the, the origin over here, turn that on, that has the three planes on it. So I'm just going to select one of them. I'm just going to select that plane right there. And then you can actually do some different, you can scale it, you can offset it. I'll show you that in a second uh, in here. So I'm just going to hit OK. And when I do that, it's asking for that dat file that we just created live stream, right? So that's that one there. Hit open, and then we get the spline coming in here uh, of that that file. Now I don't know, I don't know if this is just specifically to this dat file. Looks like that something is open. It's not a fully closed. Um, so I'm just gonna go in and edit this, and, and I honestly don't. You know, this should actually probably be a spline that, that follows that up. Um, I'm, I would have to look into if that is that website I got it from, whatever. Um, I'm just going to place a line. So we're actually going to be able to see that line in a second. Uh, I'm just going to close it up with a line. As soon as I do that, you will see that it becomes a closed in here that you've already seen. Now, be aware that this spline is live. <laughs> I don't know if live is the right word. But check out if I grab a point here. I can completely modify and make, uh, instead of an airplane wing, it's now a shark or a dolphin. Control Z to undo that. So what I definitely would recommend you do is right click on that spline and say fix, right? So now it's locked down, uh, it's fully constrained because this is the, what, the, the coordinates for that airfoil. Now what we could do now, I'm gonna stop the sketch and get out of it, is uh, we could now do a press pull, right? Q press pull and uh, and drag out uh, that airfoil shape. Uh, and you can actually see we get a line in the back where I connected that uh, with the line. So uh, for all you engineers 
and um, you know airplane all you guys who know all this stuff that I'm hoping will answer any comment in in the comments area for people who um, if anybody has any questions that I can't answer um, and I'm running out of my airfall knowledge here um, definitely uh, uh, I hope I can count on you let me do it one more time so I'm just gonna delete this extrusion for a second um, and of course our sketch gets over there uh, let me just create an offset plane because whenever I look at airplanes, uh, when I'm sitting in a, in a airplane seat, I'm going to offset a plane out here. A plane is not just a straight out thing, right? So we could go in and execute uh, that add-in again. Same add-in. Fusion scripts. Go down here. Click on that airfoil spline. Select the plane. I'm going to select my new plane. And then, of course, uh, we could play with this. So we could say that we're going to make our airfoil at half scale and why we could offset it, I don't know, 50 millimeters to the side. Um, and then when we hit OK, if I select that same foil, it's now placed over on this plane, right? Uh, and it's now been scaled down in Y and moved over. If I go to the front view here, you can see it's been moved over 50 millimeters in, in X. So that's what those kind of menus work with. Um, it, if I go back in and edit the sketch, Oops. Um, I'm going to close this one too with a line. Like I said, this probably would be a spline, but I'm just going to close it up. And I would definitely right click and fix and unfix. Right? And then I would think that if you were going to model something, because so this is many of the things. I, I found this website that has these airfoils. The, the other end of the wing, is that just, it was. You don't just do what I did, right? Don't you have, there's got to be like an other end of an airfoil that is the other side or something. I don't know. Um, but I could use uh, the loft command instead of extruding and say between this airfoil and this airfoil here. Um, and then I would get what I would think be more a wing type um, of, of wing out of this where this one was a little bit smaller. Uh, than, than the bigger one. Uh, so just, this is going to be a short live stream. Uh, so just so you, <laughs> you, again, just to make sure, go to the add-ins if you came in late. I know some people just probably just came in. Um, go to the add-ins, go to the Fusion App Store. That's where you will find uh, the different, um, the different add-ins. I used Scorpio 9999s. Uh, airfoil to that spline. I didn't test out the other one uh, because this one did such a great job both for uh, Windows and for for Mac um, and then when you have installed it, it's a free download uh, when you have installed it then you just go to add in, go to script and that's where you execute uh, the script right there alrighty folks that um, that was about that was about all I know about airfoils. Uh, airfoils. Short and sweet, I guess. Got 150 people in today's live stream. That is absolutely, absolutely awesome. I really appreciate it. For you guys who just came in a little late, I'm sorry this was a little bit of a quick one, uh, but I didn't really, you know, I said in the beginning, I'm all for, you know, making, you know, cheat and make it easy when it comes to CAD. And those app stores, there's all different kinds of tools in there. And this one here is definitely an awesome way to uh, to work with our files inside of Fusion 360. All right, guys, I'm going to do what I'm normally going to what I'm normally going to do. I'm going to do what I'm normally going to do. If you're watching the recording, thank you so much for taking the time uh, to watch. Um, and if you're watching the live stream, then I'll be in there in a second and just say hi to everybody. If you like this, thumbs up. If you don't, hey, thumbs up. Thumbs down. It's okay. Um, and as always, I appreciate all your comments and, um, and all that good stuff. You guys are the best. Thank you so much. Take care, everyone.